glad that you all are here. I, I, I mentioned to uh, Dick McCracken, who's been at about 100 of these, that uh, there's only one way to make sure you can secure an audience in San Antonio, and that is by having tacos. <laughs> um, we have a person that is celebrating her 50th birthday today. You want to stand up and we'll give you a round of applause? You're welcome. Okay, we'll give you an update on the things that have happened since our summer that has just gone by. Uh, again, for the fifth year in a row, we would name one of the great colleges to work for and in the national top 10 honor roll again for the fourth consecutive year. Uh, TCU was the only other school from Texas to make the honor roll in this category, which is really good, and that's a compliment to all of you and the hard work that you do. So give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> this is the 10th anniversary of our university in Mexico City. Um, uh, we started there uh, with uh, four students just a few years back. And now in its 10th anniversary, we were up to 900 students. And we could see in the immediate future uh, that school uh, going over 1,000 and up to 1,500. Uh, the uh, director is here with one of his associates. If they would stand and we could recognize them with Marcos. <laughs> They're doing a great job for us, and we appreciate all the work that they do. We set another enrollment record this year. Again, our overall increase to 4.5%, and at 95.97, as I do my rounding at 10,000 students, we're real happy with that, and uh, uh, happy with our continued growth. Uh, this is a an overview of the other universities, private universities in Texas. Uh, we are still in the fourth spot, uh, but look forward to passing TCU next year. Um, the other schools, uh, what, what, what their numbers are. Again, the other Catholic schools, uh, St. Edward's, uh, went down in enrollment again this year. It's about the fourth year in a row. Uh, St. Mary's also went down. University of St. Thomas went down as well. And Our Lady of the Lake had a slight increase. University of Dallas, a slight increase. And Trinity also went down almost 100 students. Very difficult year, very difficult climate. Uh, people are afraid of taking loans. Uh, and that's a category that's hit all the privates uh, very hard uh, because of uh, that issue. Uh, but again, we have a great enrollment team and they do a great job. And all of you, the faculty and administrators that support all of our programs that we have here on campus for the new students uh, is just great. And again, I thank you. And that's the reason why Incarnate Worry continues to be successful. Again, everything, as you know, is about access and especially about access to underserved students in South Texas. That's our mission. We do a very good job of it, and we're very appreciative of it. Uh, we are the University of San Antonio. Uh, when you think of uh, UTSA, it's a very large university, but about 51% of their students come from Harris County, uh, uh, not Bear County. Again, our students come from Bear County and the counties that touch Bear County, that's where the majority of them come from. We're very proud of that fact. We also get students from Houston and Dallas and Austin. But again, that's our primary catchment area, and that's what our admissions teams focus on. Uh, many of our students, as you know, are first generation, economically d disadvantaged backgrounds. And again, uh, they uh, uh, consider attending UIW as a great achievement. That's the profile of our student diversity. Um, I, I point out one thing to you, our Hispanic enrollment actually by percent has gone down because of the increasing nature of our international population. So if you look at that, uh, close to 16% of our population is international, uh, along with a growing Asian, local Asian population of almost 4% now. So that's really given a very nice balancing into our overall uh, diversity. Of the, uh, as you can see, in, in the international category, that's represented by 73 different countries. So it's a wonderful mixture. I often tell students during orientation, you can hear every language be, it's being spoken, even English on occasion. So it's great. Again, uh, we do make a tremendous impact on Hispanics in higher ed. This next number 
Uh, we graduate the most with bachelor's degrees of any faith-based university in the country, and we are number six of all private not-for-profit universities in the United States. We're not talking by percentage now, we're talking about by hard numbers, okay, of graduates. Again, uh, we've asked at our planning retreat this, this summer that our Dreben School of Education focus on uh, some selected public schools that we would work directly with, uh, and uh, this, they are going to re recommend who these schools are, and that will be coming to me uh, as a recommendation later this month. Uh, again, we want to establish UIW as a center of excellence uh, for uh, especially our kind of student. And again, we're looking at our own Catholic high schools, St. Anthony's, to have a focus in, in health careers as well as a UIW prep. Again, as we continue to build, build that whole uh, health focus, uh, this will play directly into that. Uh, as you know, August of 2016 is the target date for the opening of the medical school. Um, we are, hopefully we'll, we'll finalize by the end of October the location, either at, uh, in, in collaboration with Fox Tech downtown, which would establish a new medical center downtown, or at Brook City Base. Well, those are the two locations that are under final consideration as we speak. Uh, again, this year gives you the, the location, if, if you can see, all of the major medical facilities that would be located around it. It's a perfect location for a medical school and a partnership that we would develop with the SAISD school district. The number one uh, high school in, in the state is located in Houston with HISD and it's located with Baylor uh, and it's a, that combination of Baylor and, and focus there and we would like to do the same thing uh, here in San Antonio. Again, the, it would be located on basically about three and a half acres of land. Uh, the parking garage would be located underneath it. Uh, it would have uh, all of our facilities there. And then we'll give us another, the building right next to it, that red spot right next to it, is where we could have future development of a medical office building as well, tied into that location. So it's a great location. If it all works, we'll be very happy to do so. Again, uh, uh, our architect will begin the architectural plans. We will start construction uh, sometime May, June of 2015, so that the, the building would be up and running by uh, June of 2016. We are, as you know, in the interview process of dean candidates. Uh, we've been very excited. There have been some excellent candidates, and Kathy has promised to get that nailed down uh, by the end of, uh, uh, of this semester so that we can have that person on board and functioning in uh, January of this year. A lot of work has to be done on the uh, application for the uh, conditional uh, accreditation, and that's what the focus is of the dean and the two associate deans. Construction, if you haven't seen it or heard it. Uh, Mr. McCracken was here. We named the McCracken House. Uh, it's a beautiful facility, and if you haven't had a chance to go up and visit our folks in PR and, and other folks, please do so and take a look at the McCracken House between the high school and the pharmacy school. Uh, the, the newest hillside residency is now open and functioning. Um, if you get a chance or an opportunity, the view from that building is the spectacular of downtown. So uh, students got, have a great place to live. And uh, the front part, that glass area, are the lounges on each of the floors. So it's a very nice location. We also had the, the Ruth Eileen Sullivan Ceramic and Sculpture Studio dedication and opening. Uh, over uh, in the middle of the athletic complex. People say, well, Dr. Aneasy, why did you put the ceramic studio in the middle of the athletic complex? Because of the tie between the arts and athletics and to make that symbolization very clear. Uh, so that's why. Uh, our new apartment building uh, being located on Burr Road in Perry Court will open uh, relatively soon uh, by January and it will house 40 students there. Uh, and we're excited about that development. It's going to look very nice and be right there uh, behind the other apartment complex. Uh, construction, as you know, is un underway for the, in the fine arts complex. Uh, that's moving along. Um, uh, it just added to the confusion on campus and to the construction on Broadway and Hildebrand. So why, why not have one big mess all together? So anyway, uh, but it's working and uh, we'll have some great facilities for our arts programs. We will do a phase in of Clement and Marion Hall. Uh, this uh, Clement Hall probably will start in January 
Uh, we're going to try to empty one floor of Clement, move those students around so that we can begin. We're going to do a major renovation of Clement and bring it up to the 21st century. And then we will also start on Marion Hall, this building, uh, with construction as we build a new center here. So since there wasn't enough confusion and construction going on, we figured we'd add to it. Uh, and we will, uh, t t we will totally eliminate the front of, of Marion Hall uh, next summer uh, as we create our new state-of-the-art student center. It will be a three- or four-story building uh, with all of the uh, uh, important parts uh, in that facility. It will be a hub for our student services, activities, recreation, student engagement, learning, student success, uh, and brand new dining facility. So it should be a wonderful addition to the university campus. Uh, we are going to do a, a, a little a renovation of one of the facilities in the Gorman building uh, to put in a new uh, f finance lab. Uh, that's what it will look like, be state of the art. The student educational experience uh, is an area that, again, we continue to focus on. Uh, we want first-rate facilities to be anchored with outstanding academics, in which we have already, and putting that all together. Uh, our policies and practices need to be discerned to help the ultimate end. As we start every orientation, we start orientation by telling them that this is the first day towards their graduation, and that is very, very important. Uh, we need to look at uh, the way we teach, schedule, and serve, and again, to, to make sure that we are focused on our customer, uh, which is our student. Uh, again, uh, ca canceling classes is always a very difficult thing. It interferes with schedule, interferes with graduation rates, and we have to make sure that we don't do anything to inhibit that march towards graduation. Again, to increase blended learning opportunities, online learning, uh, together with our traditional courses, so that we have the full package and so that our students can access the full package as well. Division I has uh, uh, begun on campus. Uh, our volleyball team played the first time against a Big 12 opponent and beat them uh, against Texas Tech. And our football team now is three and two. And if those of you that, uh, that's another. Those of you that had the opportunity to look at the word this morning or if you were watching the New Orleans game last night, you saw a wonderful clip on ESPN about our team and our university. And again, that's tremendous national exposure, which is all about what we're doing here in building the brand. Very important. And again, we want to continue that bond of that cardinal pride. Uh, how would you feel if you got off of 281 every day and had to go under the Cardinal Pride Bridge and you worked at another educational institution not to be named? Our, 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 our Center for Civic Leadership continues to grow. That's our partnership with the Christmas Healthcare System. We're very proud of that and very proud of the work that our staff and students are doing. Great opportunity for, for, for global leadership and service. Other expansion of the educational experiences here. We are very much a tuition-driven institution. Um, therefore, it's very important that we are constantly ahead of the curve. Medical school is, is the latest example of the positioning of the university as the private university in Texas with our kind of student. We continue to grow our ad cap and online sites as we continue to expand uh, both ad cap uh, and our online enrollment. And that's very important for the overall growth of the university. We are going to accelerate our healthcare fields that allow students to get degrees in seven years instead of eight. All of that accelerated programmatic uh, with the really bright students that come so that they can enter in pre-farm, pre-optometry, pre-physical therapy and get those degrees on accelerated format. And we're going to do that starting next year with the medical school as well, as early as 2015. To get those tracks and we're going to tie a, uh, a, a, a process together also with the UT Health Science Center for their dental school. We had a wonderful meeting with the president of the Health Science uh, Center uh, to work together, collaborate together to help establish additional new residency programs uh, at the various hospitals located in San Antonio and South Texas. Residency programs are very important because where they do their residency is where they stay in practice. Right now, we export our students out of state uh, and lose 70% of the graduates never returning back to Texas. 
We have 159 counties in Texas that are underserved in primary care, and unless we have our residencies here, that won't be handled. We are going to implement a film program and also a school of professional golf management. Uh, we are in the process of buying a uh, golf course uh, and uh, to tie into that program. There's only one accredited program in Texas at Sam Houston. There are six in the country. Very big opportunity uh, for students and especially for our international students. Uh, we could fill that school with just students from uh, Guangzhou uh, because of the amount of openings that there are in China for golf managers. Again, uh, we want to integrate our global experience. It's very important for our study abroad, especially at our Heidelberg campus. Uh, we have the representative from the Heidelberg campus here this morning. If, if you have not met her, if you have not seen her, her office is at the ICC. See her, find her, work with her on bringing your students to Heidelberg. Very important. We want our students to be able to go abroad and study abroad, especially at our own location in Heidelberg. Beautiful place. Again, that's the responsibility of each of the deans to find how they are integrating this experience uh, into their overall program. Very important, very important for the future uh, for our students to expand their horizon. And this is not only true of university students, we also have integrated Heidelberg into our students, uh, uh, juniors, at Encarna Ward High School and St. Anthony's to give them that same experience. This past summer, 29 students, I believe, 30 students uh, went. Many of these students, probably 28 out of the 30, had never been out of Texas. And here they are in Heidelberg, Germany. It was a wonderful educational experience, but I can guarantee you it changed each one of those young men and young ladies' whole outlook on life. Our QEP, as you know, we're getting ready for the uh, visit of the so, uh, reaccreditation in 2015. And again, our QEP is going to focus on the most important areas, which are persistency rates and graduation rates, as we really focus on writing and writing skills to enhance uh, their overall graduation rate at the university. The graduation rate is the most important thing that we do. The fact that our Schools of pharmacy, uh, pass rate on the national boards around 95%. School of nursing at 97%. School of education, I think I was told it was 99%. Uh, that's wonderful. It isn't the intake, it's the outtake that's important for a school like Incarnate Word. These are our retention rates. We had a little slip from last year to this year. Uh, most of that was very simple answer called finance. Not a, not being able to afford to come back. Those are stopouts. Hopefully they're at the community college and hopefully we'll get them back in as transfer students. But we really, really have to continue to focus on that and on our persistency rates. 61%, uh, 65% is not sufficient. And that has to be at 75 and 80%. And that has to be our focus. Again, we continue to develop the brand. Uh, very important what was given to you today. Don't let it just go into your pocket. Make sure it goes onto the back of your car window so everybody knows you're a cardinal, okay? If I see your car on campus, it's going to be towed if it doesn't have that sticker <laughs> in the back window. <laughs> but that's part of branding. What are we doing? Branding helps our students get employment upon graduation. They have to know the UIW brand. Uh, and that's what we're going to push and we, do, we have a great team of uh, people that are leading the effort, and that's what our focus has to be. Our corporate identity is being implemented in three phases, uh, implementing the branding guidelines, the, the management of the, uh, of the visual identity, and the handling of, of everything in the trademarks. M managing the, the licenses and the demand for, for m m merchandise will create business. Online, uh, you, when you get the, the uh, today uh, 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 information every day, if you click on UIW in the news, that's very important. Even if you don't read it, click on it, because those clicks are counted by those that p put it. So it's very important. If they get a lot of clicks, that means people are reading it, so that means it's newsworthy. Yeah? Very important. Looking ahead to 2020, I used to be able to see 2022. Um, the, uh, the endowment this year is, is over 120 million. 
Uh, by 2020, it should be over 200 million. Our financial aid is over 150 million this year. Uh, very important. Our budget this year, over 220 million. By 2020, our budget will be a half a billion. Uh, 10,000 students at this point. Uh, we had, we had 8,000 alums in 85, over 30,000 alums, uh, and the fourth largest university in Texas. Uh, that's where we've come from. We are at nine locations in the city right now in seven council districts. We'll be in eight council districts when we move into downtown with Fox Tech. That's amazing, okay? Access, very important uh, for our students to be able to attend in Connard Word. We are proudly a Catholic university, but we are number one, a faith-based university, and we welcome students from all faiths here uh, and employees from all faiths, and we truly hope that the incarnational experience will increase your faith, whatever that may be, as a Catholic, as a Jew, as a uh, Muslim, whatever faith. Our largest, fr our largest group of new international students this year came from Saudi Arabia, 41, I believe, okay? Second only to... Our, our Chinese students, I believe they were in the 30-something category. But those are students, most of which are very, very faith-driven as a Muslim. Our, our global experience is very, very important. That's what we continue to focus on. Strong relationships with local high schools and employers. Uh, keeping our focus on health sciences while we also are focused on the overall building of the cardinal educational experience here. Everything is important. Uh, and defining the pathways for our students' uh, seamless success. Uh, the, the new doctoral programs in the School of Nursing, in the School of Business, very important programs uh, that continue to build professional opportunities for our students. 2012, that was how we were going to grow to a school of over 14,000 students. We've now updated that for 2020. Uh, with the addition of all of the health professions, with, with the elimination of our Goodyear possibility, with international continuing to grow, we are see ourselves by 2020 at about 15,400 students thereabout. Uh, again, we, we adjust that every year as we make changes in the marketplace as we see it. If that happens and we're at that number by 2020, we will be the largest private university in Texas but the only one that represents Texas with the diversity of the student body that we have. This goes without saying, everything relies on us continuing to prove the quality of the educational experience, whether it's online or on-site, that every student has. A couple of closing announcements. Uh, Dr. Pat Watkins and Vince are working on an, a sequel to uh, the book, the hottest selling book in Texas. Uh, <laughs> We have a few copies around, so uh, please purchase. Uh, but there will be an update to it, bringing it to the next five years. Um, and uh, it will be published and ready by, uh, by mid-2016. Uh, depending on how things work out the next month and a half or two months, uh, I am planning on my first sabbatical uh, since 1990. Uh, and uh, we are going to leave. Uh, San Antonio about January the 15th. Uh, you will not see my face again till June the 2nd. And then I'll be here for about two weeks to wrap up some board items and uh, end of the year results. And then we'll be gone for about a, another month. Uh, in my absence, oh, may the incarnate word work well. In my absence, uh, Dr. Doyle, uh, has, has, uh, as, as the chancellor of the university, will be in charge for uh, the day-to-day -day operations. Again, we have a great executive team here of vice presidents that do a wonderful job. Uh, when I left in 1990, I was really concerned. Uh, uh, I will turn my iPhone off and not be concerned whatsoever because I have a strong, creative team that will keep the ball moving down the road, which is very important. Um, so continue for your, 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 your prayers for my wife as she continues to get stronger. Um, uh, this year, uh, during that time period, we will celebrate our 40th anniversary. And so this trip is really for her and to uh, have a great experience. Uh, we will be on a boat uh, uh, for 128 days. If neither one of us jumps overboard, we'll be back the 2nd of June. Uh, Vince, 
uh, who's been my assistant uh, for about the last 12 years. Uh, he's the now, uh, his position has changed to chief of staff. He'll continue to manage our communications flow and enhance the structural support of the office. Uh, you'll get this announcement this afternoon in uh, more detail. I know it's correct because he wrote it. Our ever-expanding universe, uh, and there in the middle is the most important thing, which is the continued growth and graduation of our students. That closes the overall presentation, but what I would like to do, since I'm right on schedule, uh, is to answer any questions about anything that has been said or has not been said that is on your mind, and remembering the only dumb question is the one that you don't ask. I understand you said that uh, graduation was the most important thing uh, at this university. Um, but uh, what do you think about today's job market and how confident are you that you prepare students for after graduation? Thank you. Very, very important. Uh, everything around building the brand is, is, is tied into getting to graduation and then having the employment opportunities. Uh, we are very strong in our marketplace. Uh, therefore, our students, when they graduate, have a very high success rate of, of gaining employment in their respective fields. Plus, our focus being, especially in business health careers, uh, careers that there are opportunities for our graduates. So it's very, very important that you have the right programs that lead to success upon graduation. Um, so I feel very confident about that. Good question. There was another question here, the dean. What are the plans for the wellness center in relationship to the student? Uh, the wellness center, there's no, there's no specific plans other than to keep updating of all facilities at the university. So there's no specific plans unless, David, I don't know something that you know. Well, you just heard it. There is a group that's working on a proposal, and hopefully they'll give it to me when I return and I'm in a good mood. Developing our arts and music is so in keeping. Yes with our tradition, our, our first sisters loved music and arts and things like that. Um, as things change, some things die. Uh, since the 1960s, there were wonderful dramas in downstage, in the basement of the fine arts. Many of us studied with Ronnie Ibs and Maureen Halligan there. So I want you to know, we're going to have a funeral for downstage in April, <laughs> and you're invited to the funeral. <laughs> and, and, I hope when, and I hope when we have the funeral, it's flooded because we've got some heavy rains. <laughs> in closing, uh, last year was a very successful year. We were able to transfer to various programs around $16 million dollars which is very important into our endowments and other areas. This year is going to be a more difficult year uh, than last year, as I said, uh, with financial aid and what, what we had to do in order to guarantee our class sizes and so forth and so on. It's made this year tougher, uh, but it will still be a very successful year. Again, all of that happens because we have happy, productive students. Happy students bring more happy students to the campus. And that is really where our success lies in continuing to be a place where people want to be part of the Cardinal community. And that I thank each and every one of you for the work that you do, how you do it, your attitude, all that proves to, to give us continued success. So. If you haven't picked up a taco, or if there's any still left, please do so. We hate leftovers. I want to I I thank our board member, John Miller, who was here earlier. Uh, he's always there when I call and ask him to send over some tacos. And uh, he's a great guy in the family as well. And uh, I want to uh, thank you all again and wish you a great year. Go Cardinals. Let's continue to build Cardinal pride. Thank you very much.